In this video, I'm going to show you how to use one of the built-in arpeggiators inside of Cubase 5 called Arpache 5. To do so, I'm going to need to call up an instance of Halion 1, and I've already started a project called Halion, and so let me just review how to add an instrument track. I'm going to right-click or control-click in my track column and select Add Instrument Track. And then if my browser's open, let's go ahead and close that browser and then click on Halion 1 and then click Add Track. And then let's load a patch into Halion 1, and I'm going to use the browser to kind of narrow down my choices. I'm going to go to Synth Comp, and I'm going to say, give me just the, well, let's see, let's go with Analog, and let's try, well, let's try Big OB. This is going to be a, a big old synth patch. <laughs> That's good, but I need something that's a little bit more... Eh. Yeah, that's playing fifths. Let's try the poly mood. That's better. That's got a more defined attack. So if we're using arpeggiators, typically you want something with a fast attack. And so I'm going to use that poly mode. <laughs> poly mood, <laughs> not poly moog. But uh, I'm going to use this patch to control with my arpeggiator. So I'm going to close that window and then uh, with the source track highlighted I'm going to come to my object inspector and I'm going to go to MIDI inserts. If for some reason you don't see the MIDI inserts tab right click anywhere in the object inspector and make sure that you have MIDI inserts selected and then you can install one of the arpeggiators called the Arpache 5 into one of the MIDI inserts. But instead of using the very first insert, I'm going to use the second one, and you'll see why in a moment. I'm going to click in that blank window and select Arpache 5. That will call up the control panel of the arpeggiator. Now an arpeggiator works by playing the notes that we program into it by playing the notes on a MIDI keyboard. And then the parameters inside of this window will determine what order those notes are played in, how long they're played, and how long they last, and across what sort of octave range they go over. So just using the built-in default settings, let's play some notes into Arpache 5, and since it's on a MIDI insert, it's going to be patched into our Halion 1. So right now I'm just going to turn to my MIDI keyboard and I'm going to play a, C, a middle C. And this is what we get. Now it's going quite fast and that's because our step size is set to 16th notes and the length of those notes are also set to 16th notes. So they're going to be equal. They're going to be playing 16th notes against the tempo that we have programmed into Cubase. So right now we're just hearing 16th notes. 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a. So I'm going to lower each of those values down to 8th notes so that we can hear what's really happening with the arpeggiator. Okay, so right now we're hearing eighth notes with eight note lengths. And then the key range right now is set to 12. That means 12 semitones or an octave. That means I'm only going to get notes above the very bottom note that I play or the lowest pitched note that I play on my MIDI keyboard up as high as an octave. If you increase the key range, then you'll start to add more and more and more notes further up the keyboard or higher in pitch. Now let's talk about the play order. There's a lot of different play orders. The first one is just normal. It means it's gonna go up and down over whatever notes I play. So if I click on normal, or I can do so over here as well, but I'm just gonna click on that normal icon and I'm going to play middle C on my keyboard and what I'm going to get is the tonic bouncing I'm going to play that a little softer uh, bouncing up and down across an octave okay now if I choose inverted we're not really going to hear a difference because it's just using the same pattern but up and down. We really won't hear what's happening with these other play orders until we start to add some more notes to the chord that we're playing into the arpeggiator. So let's go back to normal, and now instead of just playing one note on my MIDI keyboard, I'm going to play two. I'm going to play the C, which is middle C, and then the G, which is above middle C. 
So now you can hear that the notes are going from the C to the G to the octave of C and back down. If I choose a different play order, we really can't hear much of a difference yet because it's just going through the same order. But if we go to the up only mode, now it's going to go up that scale. Or down. And these start to get more noticeable when you add even more notes to your chord. So now I'm going to play a C major, which is the middle C, E above middle C, and G above middle C. Now you hear the octave of C, the G, and then the E, and then the tonic of the chord. Or if I want it to only go up, then I can select the up only mode. Or if I just want it to go up and down, Now it's playing those notes in order, C, E, G, octave of C, back down to G, back down to E, and back down to C. Now one of the things that you may have noticed is that you do have to play pretty consistently with the velocity or how hard you're playing your MIDI keyboard for the arpeggiator to work really well. If one of the notes that you play in your chord is lighter than the other ones, then that particular note in the sequence is going to sound a little funny. So, like for example, if I were to play uh, the E a little bit too softly, see how the velocities are kind of throwing it into more choppiness? That's why I put the arpeggiator into the second insert slot. I want all of my notes to be pretty much the same velocity, just like they were on an old analog synthesizer. So I'm going to come to the first insert slot and I'm going to select MIDI modifiers. When the MIDI modifiers window appears, come to the velocity shift amount and just crank that all the way over to 126. That will make all the notes that you play on your MIDI keyboard full velocity. So there's not going to be a difference between when you hit the notes hard and when you hit the notes soft and you're going to end up with a much more even sounding arpeggiator. Now if you click in the patch window at the top of Arpeggi 5, you'll notice that there are some built-in presets that come with Cubase 5 for the arpeggiator. And you can certainly try these, or by using the store button, you can store your own after you get it programmed the way that you want. And you can also try one of the more avant-garde sort of play orders, which is the random play order. With the random play order on, what you're going to get are random notes in random orders. So if I were to play middle C by itself, then the arpeggiator is going to randomly select which notes are being used and in what order. In, it never follows the exact same order. And since my key range is set to 12, then we're going to only hear octaves. If I set this to 24 or 24 semitones for a total of two octaves, then we start to add more high notes. And that gets really cool when you start to use low notes. So I'm going to play some lower notes on my MIDI keyboard to show you what I mean. Let's play C1 on our keyboard, which is the second C below middle C. And now let's increase the step size and the note length to 16th notes. And now let's play a chord across more notes of the keyboard. So I'm going to play some low notes and high notes. And with a random on, you'll hear a much more dense, interesting sort of arpeggio.
And now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use some really great effects on arpeggiated patterns.